Hello there, welcome to another video on serverless basics. In this one I want to explain what is an API gateway and how we can integrate the Lambda function into it. I will show a practical example both using AWS console and serverless framework. So let's get started. First of all, the API gateway is a fully managed service to publish, maintain, monitor, secure and operate APIs at any scale meaning that you don't have to worry about scaling the service. It's fully hosted by AWS and the pricing is the classic pricing of a serverless service, which is pays as you go. You can think about the uh, API gateway and like an API in general as the front door of uh, for the applications, so your application to access data from your backend services, such as EC2 instance, instances or Lambda functions. So you have, let's say, your clients here, your users with laptop and devices. They want to access some uh, services or data on your EC2 instances or Lambda functions or wherever AWS service you can think about it. They will need a front door to send the request to. This one will be the AWS API Gateway. The API Gateway can integrate with different AWS services. I will explain it like later on the second part of the video when I'm gonna show how to integrate the API gateway with a Lambda function. But let's focus for a second again on the pricing. So as I said, it's the typical serverless service pricing. You pay as you, get, as you go, you pay for the number of requests. If you have like a free tier on your AWS account, you will have like X millions of requests per month for free then um, the uh, API Gateway integrates with uh, Netly with AWS CloudWatch, so you can get all the logs inside your CloudWatch services on AWS, and it also has a built-in throttling. So if you want to throttle some uh, requests based on uh, an API key or based on a path, you can do that natively on the API Gateway service. So this is really a very quick introduction. Uh, I prefer to show you how it works through an example, through an exercise. So we're gonna build like a very basic API request with the uh, for, for like a weather service. So we're gonna have uh, an API endpoint with weather and we're gonna pass the query pattern city and date. So the request will be weather, then we're gonna have city date uh, we're gonna get the query string parameters inside the Lambda function and we're gonna reply with a static result. We're not gonna, um, we're not gonna get any, you know, query any databases or query any uh, other like third-party services. I just want to show you how the API gateway and Lambda function works together. So we're gonna send back a static response with temperature and date as uh, with a JSON format. So let's go into the AWS console and show you, I'm gonna show you how it works. From the console, let's first go on the AWS Lambda service. And we're gonna first create the Lambda because it's gonna be our integration service for the API gateway. So click on create function. We're gonna start from scratch and we're gonna call my weather function. We're gonna use Node.js 14. Uh, we don't need any advanced settings and we're going to just create a function. The function has been created. Uh, let's see, uh, um, the default body of the function is just a response 200 with a lot from Lambda. So if we go back to our example, what we want to have is to get the query params city and date and go get back response back with a temperature date and we can add whatever we want. In order to get the query string parameters from the Lambda function, we need to use the um, the event object that is pushed into the um, Lambda function from the API gateway. And we're gonna do like params, const params equals event dot query string params. So the exact variable is this one. And we're gonna see that if we do like a console log of params, we're gonna see these um, values on the CloudWatch. So let's do like this, and then we're gonna say something, we're gonna do something like uh, const body 
response equals an object with a temperature uh, a fixed value then we're gonna say like date equals params date and city equals params city and then we're gonna use this pod response as the uh, response from here and so the changes has to be deployed in order to deploy we have to click here deploy so now we have uh, a lambda function with uh, which, which is going to get sorry the query string parameters from the integration which in this case is going to be the api gateway it's going to get the params and it's going to response back with 200 code and body response with temperature date and city so now that we have our my weather function, let's go to the API gateway and create a new API. Okay, here is the um, API gateway console. We have to we have different type of API: HTTP API, WebSocket API, REST API, and REST API product. In this case, we want to choose the REST API because we want to have complete control over the request and response, and also on the integration. So we're gonna click build and we are going to create our REST API with my uh, weather API. So here is going to be REST, new API. Description is going to be like my weather API example. Endpoint is going to be regional. So based on the region, in this case, I am in the London region. We don't really care for this example to have edge optimized or private. And click create, create API. So the next step is to create the actual um, resources. So let's create the, the method, which is going to be a get method. Click OK. And here we have to choose the um, where to send the request that is going to hit this method. So in this case, we want to send the to proxy the request to a Lambda function, the one we have just created. And the Lambda function is going to be my weather function. Uh, use the full timeout, use Lambda integration, yes, OK. And we're going to click Next. You're about to give yes, OK. Click the Save button. And our API should be all right. Yes, so now it's, uh, as you can see here, the integration method is the my weather function Lambda. And the next thing we have to do, so at, at this point, the the endpoint is not live. We have to deploy the endpoint. So in order to deploy the endpoint, we have to call deploy API. And we have to create a new uh, deploy stage. Uh, stages are like different, conf different like stages, exactly. Uh, when you want to, if you want to, for example, have like a test version of your API, if you want to have a beta version, you can have different stages of the same API. In this case, we're going to use, use dev and we're going to click deploy. OK, so um, from the console, we're going to see here the invoke URL. So I'm going to copy the URL, go into my uh, browser URL. I'm going to do like Siri city roam and date is going to be 2021 and July 8th. So if I hit enter, we see that the response is from our Lambda function because we have temperature 20, 29, date and Rome. So if I change here the query params, it's going to change also the response. OK, perfect. So we, uh, we have demonstrated that the API gateway is forwarding the request to our Lambda function. We can also see the same thing on our um, on the CloudWatch, that which is uh, linked to our Lambda function. So if we go here, view logs in CloudWatch, we're gonna see the uh, the console log of the Lambda function and also the uh, request and response details. Here it is the log. We go here, start params as you can see is Rome and London. So it's working as expected. If we go back on the API, we can see uh, we have very different options here. I'm gonna make um, uh, another video on like a deep dive on the API requests, authorizers, and uh, request and response integration. 
Um, so now we have created the API uh, gateway and the Lambda function through the console log. The next step, we want to do this uh, programmatically using the serverless framework. So let's go to Visual Studio Code and show, show, I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, I am on the terminal and I'm going to create a new serverless project with the serverless create dash dash template AWS node dash dash path. I'm going to call it like my weather service. And now the serverless framework will create the project for me. And I'm going to do like uh, my weather service here. So let's open Visual Studio Code. And we see the handler here, which is the basic one, as we as we saw before on the Lambda function. So actually, if I go on our Lambda function, I can just copy the code. What we want to show is like that it's easier to use like um, infrastructure as a code tool as serverless framework. So I'll copy the code uh, export to yes handler the par params query string parameters. Okay, perfect. This is the uh, function. Then we go on the serverless uh, YAM file where our service is actually configured. And we want to add the API gateway with the Lambda function. So let me clean this file for a second. Let me zoom in as well. Zoom in. Okay. Perfect. So we have here the functions, hello, which is the function here. We can call it like weather function. The handler here is the handler.hello. So let's see here. So actually here we are exporting handler. So we can do like handler is going to be weather function. And we can change it here as well. Okay, perfect. So here is where we define the function, the Lambda function. Then we need to add the trigger for the Lambda function. In our case, the trigger is going to be the API gateway. So the triggers are defined as events. And in our case, is an HTTP event. So let me uncommand these things. Path is going to be whether and the method is a get. So we don't need all this stuff. We don't really need it. With these two, like 15 lines, we have defined the Lambda function with the integration with the API gateway. If we want to see how, if we want to deploy actually this service, we can just run the serverless deploy um, command, and we're gonna see what the serverless framework is gonna create for us on the AWS account. So let's hit the button and wait like 30, 40 seconds Okay, the stack has been created and we can actually see very interesting information because the um, the service framework has created like um, a stage as we did before. So this stage is by default dev if you don't specify uh, a different stage on the YAM file. Then he's created the services on the US East 1 region. The stack name is this one. He has created like 11 resources, we don't really care. Okay, the endpoints are, so this is like the API endpoints are these ones with dev and weather because it gets the path from here that we have defined. And the Lambda function is my weather service dash dev dash weather function. So if we go on this, if you navigate through this URL and just substitute the first one that we used here, we should be get the same result. Let's see. Yes. And as you can see, we use this, we get the same result. And if we want to see, we have to switch to US East one. And we're going to see that the service framework has created the Lambda function and the API gateway as well. So there you go, my weather service. And it has as a trigger here, the API gateway. So the code is the same. If you go here, this is the code. They are just deployed. If you go on the API gateway, we should be able to see the service as well. Yeah, there you go. You have the weather path, the meta request, Lambda integration, and all the other stuff, the same as we did before. 
Okay, so we have seen how we can create this very simple exercise with these endpoints and Lambda function integration, both from the AWS console and serverless framework. This is, as I said, a very basic example. In the next videos, I'm gonna do like a deep dive on the API gateway, on the request integration, response integration, and also the integration services as well using the API gateway. I will also show how to use um, Cognito with it and API keys if you want to throttle requests. So if you want to see more of this video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching.